All right, Dan, this is the last fireside for the day. And uh, it's on parents filling out that uh, statement of birth record or the form too, right? So uh, you wanted to kind of cover that of like, did the parents, you know, do something to injure their the child at the time or what exactly happened there again? Well, when you when you really look at what's going on, the problem that's happened with this, um, what to say, awareness that something seems to be very binding based on the birth registration system. And when we talk about birth, we're always talking about legal surname event registration. Uh, it's like registering uh, the assignment of a legal title, uh, of a persona. It's, it's like the birthing of a person, a legal persona, not uh, a natural child. So, um, but the, the, the problem gets in there when we mix the two together. And because a little, you know, privacy is being um, affected, you know, by active state because they're asking for something on the birth document that is really none of the business of the state uh, until that child makes a decision. And, and so there's been controversies. Do I fill this out? And how do I fill it out if I'm in the legal system at the moment, but I don't want my child to really be in it? And then they, they're big run-ins at hospitals and I'm not gonna let you leave with the child. And then there's, uh, you know, chasing them down later. And I think it's just because we're really not seeing the clarity, at least at the moment, um, for those who haven't really made their election sure, but then they're, you know, trying to, you know, prevent, uh, you know, something that the state's requiring them. And because, if someone's doing something in a legal context and you're in there, um, the state is really the parent of the child because they carry the legal birth surname jurisdiction. And so if parents are out there contracting and taking benefits and privileges, and I have to admit, you know, going into a hospital using their services um, and then saying, I'm not going to fill out the records or I'm not going to do what I was supposed to do, that the hospital is required to take to fulfill their role. And we just keep going on and on and who's going to blame who for, uh, you know, some form of confusion on this. But when people are in the legal, then they're deemed to be public. And that uh, um, that implied social contract that they're acting on um, requires them to declare their issues because, you know, they every day uh, in the world of legal in a pyramid scheme of Satan, who does multi-level marketing, um, of uh, a monetary value feigned child, uh, he's farming babies uh, of Babylon. And so he, uh, he requires, uh, you know, uh, in his legal system for there to be a record of the issue coming from uh, the legal parent. But the legal parent is actually controlled by the legal state because the legal parent is carrying around a legal uh, title that places them under the jurisdiction and uh, as the subject matter of the state. So what do you do? Like, uh, is there a way to protect the child? What would be the best way um, to do this? So if, if I was in the shoes of someone, and again, uh, this is just truthful counsel. Um, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not giving you legal counsel and I'm not here to entertain you either. So this is not for entertainment purposes. This is for truth and spiritual good conscience. If I was in the shoes of someone um, that was required to fill one of these out while they were, if I was participating legal, then uh, you, it's required to give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And Caesar controls the coin, the invented name, it's coined, this legal state surname invention, um, which is nothing more than a forgery, a fiction, a lie, a falsehood. Well, he controls that. So um, therefore, it would be required to put the surname, a surname of some sort on that document. But regarding the given name, um, you know, the given name is a fact, not a fiction. Um, and it is the property of God and it is not the property of Caesar. And it would really be up to the child uh, to come to either a spiritual elective discretion uh, of choice, whether they want to participate as a legal participant, as in the heir of their forefathers or foremothers. But uh, the uh, the child certainly can't make a decision. 
And it would not, according to what I've read, and I'm only going to give you an example of this, would it be required to put the forename, the given name, the factual name, the God-given Christian name on the birth record um, of a legal birth? Well, when we look at legal birth um, in the Dictionary of Canadian Law, 5th edition, um, it doesn't state that a birth name has anything to do with a given name. And then when I look in Section 15 of the Vital Statistics Act of Ontario, just using this as an example, I can't say that every Vital Statistics Act will read this way. I'm only reading you from what I am surrounded with at the moment. And uh, it says, it's under the subheading, adding forename to birth registration, which would be surname registration. It says, if a child's birth was registered under this act or a predecessor of it, and the child was not given a forename under the subsection 10, bracket 2, or a predecessor of that subsection, or under a predecessor of this act, now I have to go slowly on this, the person, now they're talking about someone in legal, they're in legal persona, the person with lawful custody of the child, we're talking about the legal child, okay? Child, citizen, held in legal detention, okay? Under legal bondage, just as the child that's in the birth ward, does not have a given name on it, strictly a band on the wrist with the surname of the child that has been chosen, okay? So therefore, um, you'll find baby boy Smith, baby girl Taylor, but it's not with a given name, at least to my memory, having uh, you know visited these hospitals and of having two children before I came to knowledge, uh, in those wards of the hospital for the delivery uh, after the delivery of the child to the state, so to speak. So um, we go further here. So I'm going to read again. I just want to make sure we're getting this. Adding forename to birth registration, which is surname registration, which is a legal birth persona, birthing a persona, a person, okay? Not birthing a natural child. It says... If a child's birth was registered under this act or a predecessor of it, and the child was not given a forename under this subsection, okay, it says, A, the person with lawful custody of the child, or B, the child, if he or she has attained the age of 18, which appears to be in Canada, age of election, may elect in the prescribed manner to add a forename to the birth registration. Where a person elects under this subsection, the Registrar General shall note the addition of the forename on the birth registration and issue a birth certificate to the person on payment of the required fee. Appears you even have to pay to get into that system to have a bond. But it appears here that there is a scenario of a child not having their given name, their God-given name, or their God-given Christian name of truth placed on uh, basically a fictitious persona record. And therefore, um, the fact that it's there would tell you that there was an opportunity to not put it on there. Um, because it would be up to the child to make that decision. And the child can't enter into a contract, nor have the ability to discern what to do. So therefore, it appears that there would have only been a statement of birth record with uh, lacking a child's given name or a private name um, not being disclosed to the public realm, uh, because private is opposite to public. Uh, in a true sense, private would be set apart uh, even it spoke about the believers and disciples of Jesus Christ to be set apart believers. So we are separate or private, separate means uh, not part of or private, not public. So now again, said, Daniel, my... the one thing here is that the private in this legal world, there's such a thing as private as well. 
right? right. Private and public. It, it's a little bit confusing because um, once you enter into the public, the privacy has kind of gone down the toilet. And therefore, the public side, because the public will win, in a sense, when you enter into public, your private, what you consider to be private, natural, God-given, unalienable position has to go to the wayside because you've entered into a collective of other people who do not share your views or do not have your moral standards. And so, you know, we have to look at legal has nothing to do with conscience. It has to do uh, strictly with a robotic, uh, just logistic sense. Uh, logic is not reason. Uh, it's kind of more mathematical. It's not really based on um, someone's uh, uh, moral decision. It's just based on what the legal rules or the letter of the law dictates in the legal. So um, in here, um, when we're talking about private um, or that forename, they're very clear that they're not really getting into too much discussion in it, but it is showing that in the event, at that event of a legal event, the only, it appears that someone could have filled out the, what was required for the statement of birth record, but without putting the given name or the forename or what we'll call the God-given Christian name into the record, there would be no issuance of a birth certificate. Therefore, there's no issues. Now, one question Therefore, comes there's to no mind dispute. here. Dave. One question comes to mind. The, the child at that point is, or, or the newborn, is, is considered um, a non-person in their state's eyes. Is that correct? Yes, because actually, even in Roman civil law, uh, children, uh, even women... But mainly children were considered to be non-persons. So they weren't in a category of being or capable of being a person because they couldn't operate um, in a, a contract with the state, uh, implied, expressed. They couldn't get into that. So a child can't be involved in duties, debts, and obligations. Uh, and therefore, any uh, at all contract that even a child uh, was entered into or appears to be entered into uh, is voidable um, at election if they choose to do so. So it's really, again, we have to look at the, you know, what's happening here. But I think what's what happens with parents, they get very emotional on it and they get a little offside because, you know, to me, um, they're they're already operating in a legal system and then they're not even following at least, uh, you know, what would be the peaceful situation of what is Caesar or the legal system really required on that statement. And therefore, yes, um, because the parents are using a surname, there would have to be a choice of one or the other. But as far as the, the uh, uh, first place name, um, that's really up to the child to make that decision. Uh, though parents have done this, and despite the fact that parents have filled in both, as did my parents uh, with their lack of knowledge at that moment, it doesn't really matter because God's still in the protection of this. Even the Roman civil system had maxims that stated where truth is, fiction of law does not exist. So therefore, anything to do with statute law is fiction law. And therefore, the surname is an error. And in essence, it's really canceled out but they leave it there for the child to make a decision because they kind of frown on erasing out errors. They leave them on there. They just note them. And then they wait to see whether or not you have discerned the error. Okay. And if you've learned the error of your parents' ways, um, having been in the legal system, well, then you would turn down the right or the offer uh, to be a legal participant, um, and you would know it would be unconscionable to be under the Prince of Peace, and then wear a criminal uh, or a discriminative appellation or a surname, which was clearly, uh, you know, told us or admonished in Scripture, Job 32, 21-22, we were not to accept any man's person or give flattering titles, and uh, this came from the Hebrew word K-A-N-A-H, which was translated the closest to English to mean a surname, especially a surname. 
So we are not to take on the persons or the personas of men or their imaginations. And in fact, the truth of Christ would actually bring down the imaginations of men. So we want to be very, very, uh, you know, uh, diligent in actually, what do we spend our time doing? Where are we? Um, what are we, what are we spending our moments reading? Um, if we're seeking truth, then we're going to go to the source of that. And it requires us uh, to take the time. Um, it, you know, it's, it's great that we're putting these videos out. It's great that we're putting things up on YouTube. It's great that we're doing the Zoom seminars. But if you're just sitting back there, um, just waiting for it to be spoon fed or, or put on a platter, uh, that's not really with an appetite to to get to to find the truth. Um, that's really waiting as what's got you in the trouble originally is being spoon fed uh, basically things that you didn't realize you shouldn't have been taking in to your mind or your temple of God. And uh, therefore, the responsibility still remains with you um, to uh, to do a proper research uh, to make to know that you're making your election sure. But if you're okay. just operating just frivolously out there, uh, blaming the government, you know, blaming, you know, Christian remedy and law, uh, you know, blaming, you know, basically the churches uh, that you once attended or blaming basically the banks and the politicians. Uh, well, that's the blame game. And that will never get you out of it, because what you're really doing is saying it's not my fault for what's going on now. It's everybody else's fault. And I'm just going to sit around there, you know, basically erratically, uh, you know, pointing the finger at everybody else, but not realizing it's you who has to make the proper change and decision. Now, Daniel, and just kind of one last uh, thing on this is, is there uh, for a young parent or whatever that has a child, uh, they're, they're realizing now here through this knowledge, uh, is there any action that is possible to consider uh, or maybe you you're you're not even know the the answer of how this thinks and i'm not saying that you're you know everything you're getting disclosure from god as time goes on um whether or not there's a recanting of this what was signed and filled out or anything to do with that well, is that in in the subject realm here? i mean it, it could happen uh you know, like I said, like there's things the parents did if they're still living. Um, could they recant um, what they put on there? I mean, I've never seen it done. OK, and I'm not going to say there isn't a possibility of doing that uh, because they have affected the child um, on it. And it could make a change to the record if they did recant that. I don't know what the ramifications would be, but if the child's already acting on the error and chooses to act on the error, um, then I believe the error would just continue anyways, because they've already been utilizing and, and consenting to allow um, themselves to be mingled in with the public realm, so to speak. Right. You're right. I forgot that. That's the sense though, that it's, it's really the actions of the child if in fact they're activating that surname by moving and so forward. i could say i've i've realized my error removed it recanted it um if i've actually made the proper elective choice and done that but it doesn't mean that it's going to change something because this is an individual uh you know elective choice just like baptism uh yes uh we're all you know baptized you know uh, in a, when we when we make the right decision and then we we actually make our election sure and we're baptized in Christ, then uh, yes, we come out the new creature. But you can't do that for someone else. You can only show the example. Uh, you can't you can't uh, you know force someone uh, to make that election as uh, we uh, uh, we basically uh, you know can't uh, you know basically force anybody to do anything it's really up to them it's consent makes the contract even even in the legal sense so when people are complaining about what they're under at the moment it's because their consents in there and the thing that is consent would have to be something that would be individual and private which would have to be the thing the name that your parents basically gave you under the authority of god and therefore 
um, once that, uh, you know, once that child decides uh, to consent to be a legal participant, then they've, they've basically entered into this implied contract with the state, uh, even though they were never really party to the contract, because certainly, as scripture said, we're strangers and sojourners. So uh, in a foreign land, in a respect to the foreign or legal governments, but we are no longer foreign to God once we've actually made our election sure. So um, it's just, uh, like I said, it's going to take some time uh, to wear off the scarring. Uh, and in many cases, some people just don't have any knowledge of scripture whatsoever. Uh, and they were never, they were never, you know, kind of instructed or uh, shown uh, the importance of reading the Bible. But uh, you can see what's gone on with society. And if you uh, want to, you know, just listen to someone who had uh, seen what was coming, could see the future, uh, so to speak, by the direction of way society was already operating, uh, there is the uh, audio and a transcript of Paul Harvey, If I Was the Devil. So you may want to listen to that and uh, you'll see how atrocious uh, society has become because it's actually uh, fulfilled exactly what he stated in that, uh, in that audio. Yeah, I think I'm going to put the text of that on the uh, spreadsheet there, Daniel. So anyway, it's great. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you tonight on the Zoom. Okay. okay. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye now.